In 1969, a rising NASCAR driver was involved in a terrifying wreck. But just who was this driver, and how does he correlate to Dale Earnhardt? Three, two, one. Don McTavish, legendary driver from the Northeast, a guy who was right on the cusp of a budding NASCAR career. Now, in this episode, we're going to take a look at his life and career, and also how his life correlates to Dale Earnhardt Sr., and also a tragedy at Monaco. Don McTavish, from Dover, Massachusetts, in first rows of popularity, driving demolition derby cars, appearing on ABC's Wide World of Sports. This allowed him to be on the TV game show to tell the truth due to his driving ability and wild antics. By the early 1960s, he was behind the wheel racing all up and down the East Coast. McTavish was known for racing a variety of numbers on his cars, notably many with letters of the alphabet in it, or sometimes just letters themselves. The l &R speed shop on the side of his car was for very good reason, as McTavish was in fact the manager. Over the years, one of his most popular rides was the Circle J car. Due to his success, in 1963 he began racing in NASCAR's late model division. In 1966, Don won the NASCAR National Late Model Sportsman Championship, competing in 122 races that year. His closest competitor that season was Wild Bill Slater, who finished over 3,000 points behind McTavish. In the winter of 1968, McTavish moved south to the site set on the NASCAR Grand National Series, now known as the NASCAR Cup Series. In 1969, McTavish entered the Permatex 300 at Daytona, driving Gene White's Mercury Cyclone No. 5 entry in what is now known as the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Other drivers that day included notable names like Leroy Yarbrough and both Bobby Allison and Donnie Allison. Now on this particular day, it was very chilly, clouds were moving in, very overcast, and NASCAR decided to bump up the scheduled start time by eight minutes. And with these big, old, heavy cars like this, it took two full laps to get up to speed around that racetrack. But it didn't take long before Don started moving up through the pack. But unfortunately, on lap eight, suddenly the car veered to the right, and he caught gate seven, which was basically an opening in the solid concrete that was covered by a piece of guardrail. And the impact was so forceful that it ripped the car in half all the way up to the firewall, completely exposing Don to all the other traffic and elements on the racetrack. And unfortunately, through the smoke and all the carnage that was going on, the number 27 of Sam Summers was not able to see Don spinning down the racetrack and made head-on impact with him, unfortunately killing Don instantly. And this is sad in so many ways because Don had this budding career and there was so much talk around the garage area and beyond that he, in fact, had a fully funded ride in the NASCAR Grand National Series after the Daytona 500. And with this passing, he also became the very first driver in NASCAR to lose his life under racing competition at Daytona Speedway. And that's an unfortunate stat that he shares with Dale Earnhardt Sr., who was the last driver to lose his life under NASCAR competition at Daytona Speedway. Now, the very next day, newspapers and publications all across the country were focusing on this incident, including the New York Times. They were putting big pictures of Don's body sitting in the race car after he was deceased, his legs severed, still inside of his racing suit. And a lot of people found that very distasteful. A lot of friends, a lot of people that knew him did not like what happened with this. And the irony of this right here, especially with the New York Times, is because less than two years prior to that, the New York Times did this complete article bashing ABC for their coverage of the Grand Prix of Monaco in a wreck with Lorenzo Bandini where his car caught fire and they basically covered him being drug out of the car and drug away with flames on him down the racetrack. And the New York Times, uh, well, here's what they had to say. ABC Sports programmed playback tape recording in color of the Grand Prix of Monaco, the racing event in which Bandini's car burst into flames and caused third-degree burns to which the driver succumbed three days later. That the catastrophe had to be shown from a distance was journalistically understandable. But the manner of the report age, particularly since there was time to do whatever editing might be dictated by the requirements of good taste, 
left much to be desired. So I find it very ironic that the New York Times had issues with ABC with what they did, but it was perfectly okay to show the images of Don sitting in his car and uh, not feel bad about it. Anyways, hope you found this educational. I hope somebody out there that's never heard of this story will uh, do a little bit more research on this. A lot of great material out there on Don. Uh, and that, that Circle J car right there. I mean, this is my favorite. Just look at that. Cigarette in the mouth there, the rolled up jeans. Such a damn cool picture. But anyways, hope everybody out there is having a great day today. As always, we'll see you at the checkered flag.